think we're live, so uh, good afternoon, guys. Um, at least it'll, it'll be afternoon for you. Um, what I basically wanted to do was to show you how, um, just like in the YouTube video that you guys watched, and um, hopefully you did watch because it was homework, um, how the rotor, once it's energized, turns into pretty much a giant magnet. And through that magnetic field between the north and the south poles, that field disturbance when it's spinning between those poles and that small clearance that's between the stator. So, so this guy, that's what induces our voltage. That's what gives us that alternating current. So what I got for you is the rotor from what we took apart yesterday. So here's what I'm gonna do. So important thing to kind of review over for um, the parts of the rotor is I've got slip rings on the end. So the slip rings, if you take a look, you'll see each one has a winding um, that pretty much goes to the two separate parts of the pole pieces. And um, just remember each pole will alternate north and south as it spins at um, 13,000 RPM or so. But one pole is gonna be, um, I'm sorry, not one pole. One of the slip rings is going to be ground and one of the other ones is going to be power. So between the two, power and ground, that's how that current flow goes in and then finds its way out. And remember, it doesn't take a lot of power to do that. So it only takes about, what the books say, 1.5 to 5 amps to actually get this guy to actually energize and make a magnetic field. Because remember, it's all about how many strands of copper wire are in there. And if you want to think about that, that's just like a giant spool of copper wire is um, really all it is. But uh, here's what we're gonna do. So, we've got silver auto over here. Hopefully I don't short anything out to where, you know, um, I'm gonna be stuck, but I won't be. But, now notice, this, this is just a, a really extreme um, version of this. You, you don't have to do it this way. But um, what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to attach this side to ground and yes these cables are live but remember this is way more amperage than this thing would ever need um we're just using this just for the sake of you know having a 12 volt source but obviously you don't need a direct line from the battery to go to the rotor to make it magnetic it only takes a small amount of current right now we're we're going way above and beyond so that's one thing you might not have said in the video with the battery is uh you don't need the current that's available from the battery to make this work. Remember, it's only working on that small circuit once you turn the key in the ignition. That's all it takes. And then the voltage regulator, where that circuit is falling through, is pretty much the boss. And he judges, okay, how much of that current, that 1 to 5 amps, is this guy going to get? Because that's how we control how much voltage we can finally, or voltage and current, that we can send back to the battery. So it's all controlled right here, so voltage regular would be here, and then the brushes, and that's controlling how much the uh, magnetic field is um, strengthened or weakened to put juice back to the battery. So this is what you guys have all been waiting for. Um, if you're ever doing anything like this, remember, make sure you are insulated and you're wearing some sort of protective gloves. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to, so right now, not magnetic, so here's one of the uh, the housing bolts. Not magnetic, so if I go on right here, magnet. I'm gonna take it away, no magnet. So all I'm doing is I'm sending current and it's completely going through, so it's going from power to ground through that coil of wire that's wound so many times and it's making this a, a, a super magnet, so to speak. So um, just to show you how, how powerful that magnet can be, I don't know if this is going to work or not, just because this might be chrome, but... So, you know, with, with the field, <laughs> it, it, it's pretty strong. This, this weighs quite a bit, but all I'm doing is taking the current, it's making the super magnet, I can hold it there, and then boom. So, I, honestly, this is a... This is a metal table, so I wonder if I could even pick this guy up. Nope, he's he's kind of really stuck on there. But as soon as I, I let I let the field go, <laughs> and I get this is a metal countertop, so it's, it's magnetizing everything on here. Um, hopefully, uh, it's not getting any um, 
any of those magnetic fields near the laptop. Because since we're making a super magnet, um, electronics don't like um, EMF very close to them. Um, it, it disrupts things. So that's why um, I'm, I'm kind of like a little weird as, as far as the laptop distance. I don't want that to happen. But just so you guys can see, yes, it's not just a YouTube prick. It is true. This is the principles on how it works. Remember, we are not using battery current. We're using a small amount of current, but it's going to be the same deal. So as soon as I energize that, I can throw stuff out all I want and it's going to stay now. It, it kept a little bit of a magnetic field there shortly afterwards, but that's basically all I wanted to show you guys. And what I'm going to do next is, so that was, that was the fun part. Now I just want to show you guys quick. Now I can actually move this around. So we have uh, the rest of our, our uh, alternator here. Now I'm going to show you guys quickly um, a little bit of what you can expect when you're looking at stuff that's on vehicles. So we're just going to walk through that, just kind of do like a mini visual inspection, so to say. So I'm going to attempt to carry this laptop over without unplugging it. We're doing pretty good. There's four wheeler in the background. All right, but here's here's basically what we got. So I took the cover off, but here's the 5.3 and the Chevy. Okay, so I've got the belt. Remember, it's running off the belt. First thing I'm looking at is making sure, okay, the belt's tight. It's not worn. There's no there's no residue on it, like oil or coolant or anything like that, because that'll that'll ruin the belt and that can make this slip. If the alternator slips. Like if that belt slips on the pulley, this is going to give me um, a, a um, lower output than it should or a um, irregular slash inconsistent output. And it can be easily um, confused as far, oh, it needs an alternator because it's not it's putting out really erratically. It could be just the belt slipping or a bad belt. So make sure you always check that first. The next thing you're going to see right over here is this big battery cable wire. So this is, this is coming from the battery that's over there. Remember, this guy, this guy is not providing power for the alternator to work. This is for current to flow back to the battery. So this big heavy gauge battery cable, that is not for powering the alternator. That is for giving back. So it's giving back DC current that way. Never this way unless the diodes fail. That way. So the power is going that way. And you'll notice, um, I'll try to bring the laptop in a little closer. Um, Quality might be poor, but there's a connector here, and this connector has two wires. So this this is actually um, PCM controlled. Um, so this goes into the voltage regulator, and from the voltage regulator that goes to the brushes. So that's my small amount of current. So as soon as I turn the key on, once it goes through everything it needs to, so the fuses and the relays and the PCM to determine how much I need from this guy, this produces power and puts it to the brushes and does exactly what we just did on the bench, which was create a super magnet or a magnetic field in the rotor itself. And that determines how much power actually flows back to the battery. So that's kind of the current flow. So current flow is going through the voltage regulator to the brushes, then from the brushes it goes into the rotor assembly. And it induces that voltage to the stator, and from the stator we go through the diodes and the rectifier and the heat sink. And then from there, we go back to the battery. So that's that's basically the principles of how all this is working. So this is um, sort of a review, but also I want to show you guys that you know it, it wasn't just um, it's just like some parlor trick. Um, this does become a magnet, and all, all you need is okay power and ground. Um, for the test, it doesn't matter which one I do, but there is one that's designated for power and one that's designated for ground. Um, just so you guys know. But that's all I really want to share with you guys. So well, we're at nine minutes. Short little video just so you guys can visually see how this works apart from the YouTube video I shared for homework. See you in class.